Booba Pro Audio presents. <laughs> I swear I'm professional. <laughs> and take two. I'll be your host of the show. I'm L.A. Hefe. All right, I am here with UberProAudio.com with a man who needs absolutely no introduction whatsoever, Al Hefe from NoFX. Thank you so much for taking sure. the time to speak with me. Thanks for having me. Um, so before we get into the nitty and the gritty of what you're playing right now, okay. um, one thing I want to talk to you about right off the bat is consistency in your equipment. Um, it's very hard to find a photo of you not playing a Telecaster into a Mesa Boogie Mark III amp. That is very hard to find. Um, in a, in an, an age where technology is endless and guitar options are endless, what hasn't driven you to change it up that much? Like, what what's so good about those two pieces of equipment together that keeps it just there? Well, I uh, that Telecaster I started with a 1977 Telecaster, I believe, and I had the original pickups in it when I joined uh, the band No Effects, and to get a more uh, distorted tone, a high gain, it would always feed back on me because it's vintage. Mm. So I had to change the pickups to. Uh, EMGs standards, and I was. I also play a lot of clean, do a lot of jazz and blues. So in, in the punk stuff, when I joined, I was doing going from hardcore punk rock tone to a jazzy bluesy tone, mm -hmm. and to go back and forth, uh, finding a pickup that can handle both and make your clean sound nice and clean, and then your dirty sound really gritty. I found the EMG standard work great without feedback, you know, mm -hmm. with the original pickups, and. Um, as far as the amp, the Mesa Boogie Mark III was my favorite sounding amp because it also had a beautiful clean tone and mm -hmm. a beautiful heavy Metallica style distorted tone. Yeah. So I would, I chose that to go back and forth. It has just worked for me over the years. Although now I am using an EVH3 mm -hmm. head. Now the reason for that is because the Mark III is old, it's vintage, and things break down. And you're on the road, uh, whether it's a, a, a dying capacitor or whatever may, you know, parts in there go bad. Mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> so I had to get a newer style head. Okay. And I kept dealing with, oh, and I would bring two Mark III's and one would break and then I'd go into the other one. And the other one would go in the shop and then both of them. And so so that, that's kind of where I wanted to go. So I've seen photos where you're using uh, the EVH and Friedman's, I believe. Yes. Um, so, so my question was going to be, is it just easier to tour with an amp that's more easy to fix? More parts are more readily available now. Yes, the the Friedman, I had, that was custom uh, made for me by Dave Friedman, mm -hmm. and it is beautiful. It is my favorite sounding head. It's fucking amazing, and I took that out on tour, and it got a dent on it, and I freaked out. <laughs> I was <laughs> just like, that's my baby, yeah. you know, and I thought, I can't take this thing on tour. It's going to get messed up. Yeah. So I, that's at home in my home studio. I record with it all the time, mm -hmm. and um, I use the EVH3 because it's still a pretty uh, rad tone. Yeah. Never breaks down on me. I've never had a problem, you know. I recently took it in for, to, for repair just to have it checked out, mm -hmm. and it had been two years, and they said this it's beautiful there's nothing wrong with it i'm just going to tighten up some screws and they're like you need to bring it in every year just for me to check it mm -hmm. they go most guys wait too long and they bring it in and shit's just broken yeah. yeah so now when you're recording an album for no effects um from what i've read online what you use in the studio as with most artists is, is pretty vastly different so now what does your studio setup look like? Okay, the studio setup's totally different than the live setup. The live setup, I'm used to that uh, Telecaster mm -hmm. over the years, and I have my tone that works in every room and every hall or wherever I'm playing. So studio setup, I use a Les Paul. Mm -hmm. And usually a Marshall head or a Boogie head. Mm -hmm. And we sometimes we'll do a combination of two tones. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we've done Mesa Boogie, Stiletto, uh, Mark V, a lot, but my favorite is a hot rotted Marshall, like my Friedman. Yeah. Yeah. So now, uh, before I get too ahead of myself, for cabs, are you still playing through Mesa Boogie cabs? Um, I have the EVH cab with me on the road, mm -hmm. but we do use Boogie cabs for our records for recording. Cool, cool. So now, in terms of effects change, do you run a pretty big effects pedal on the road with you? 
Um, you know, I have a crybaby. I like the, uh, um, what's the, I have the Jerry Cantrell. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And I've tried so many different pedals, and to me, that pedal just sounds so good. Yeah. It's what I'm looking for. Then I've done the Dimebag Daryl one, but that one works great. Mainly, it's the pedal. Uh, my distortion on off is from my amp. Um, I may throw a little flanger here and there, but it's just really quick for a small little part yeah. of a song. And we go into uh, reggae style music. I might throw a little phaser on there just for the uh, the clean tone, mm -hmm. you know. But I don't really run that many effects, no delays or anything. Um, now for the the basics, the strings, the picks. Is, have you tried a bunch of different brands, a bunch of different gauges, or like have you been pretty consistent with that as well? I, I use tens. Um, my pick, I've always just used the blue nylons Dunlops, and this is what I'm used to. I've always, I think, when I was uh, learning guitar, Ingve uh, Mountain was one of my idols. Eddie Van Halen, of course, too. Yeah. But but Ingve and I. I studied what he was using a thicker pick and I was like how is he going that fast with such a fat pick you know and, and I got used to the thick one mm -hmm. so so you 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 uh segued perfectly there can we talk about what inspired you to play guitar because you are such a technically proficient player like I remember the first like first time I heard no effects I was like when did we start playing guitar like this in punk rock like punk rock you know the, the general perception is always oh four chords punk rock sure yeah not so much you listen to no effects song you're like oh damn like I, that's like I can't play that when I joined the band um, that's what I brought to the band was I, I, I played jazz and blues and uh, um, you know lots of uh, other styles of music I was, in, I was a metal guitar player too, mm -hmm. speed metal. So I was in a Metallica and all that stuff. So when I joined the band, my first recording was Longest Line, yeah. which we're doing tonight, <laughs> the whole album, EP. Well, not album, it's an EP. Mm -hmm. But there's a song called Remnants, and there's so many little pieces that's from me, you know, influence, like the jazz yeah. and the, you know, the metal, and there's like just pieces thrown together that it's just so weird and wacky you're like what the hell is this <laughs> now did you was that something you you naturally uh gravitated towards when you were younger in terms of style um when i first started playing guitar it was like led zeppelin um ronnie montrose Jimi hendrix you know it was classic rock yeah and um aerosmith and then i uh got into blues and I took some lessons and learned some blues, and I took some jazz lessons and learned some jazz. And yeah, I was into Stevie Ray Vaughan, and you know, I have a wide variety. I also played trumpet, you know, since yeah. fifth fifth grade. So I was in the marching band and jazz band all through high school and college, and I, I studied music in college. So I, I sang classical, you know, opera, barbershop quartet, learned how to harmonize and all that shit. So I guess when I joined the band, I brought all that. Yeah. To, to the table and like okay now we're going to record this EP The Longest Line and alright hey, get out there and do your thing throw the harmonies in there <laughs> well it works you, it, it really it comes across that you know you, you changed you changed the direction of, of the music in a, in a really really cool way and I mean you, speaking as a guitarist who listens to punk and plays punk it's it's cool to see, and it's almost like a challenge, like a, a kind of a bummer sometimes though. Like I, I sit down and I listen to like, we called it America, that intro, and I'm like, I can't touch that. I've been playing for 15 years. It's like, I can't oh, touch the, the, that. The solo intro? Oh, yeah, that, dude. That took a lot of takes to get that down in the studio. But I've seen you do it live. I've seen you do it live and I'm like, come on. Like I got it, I got it down now live, but I remember recording that and just like, stop, do it again. I, I, I'd make him as that, do it again, do it again. I think Bill Stevenson was the, he was just hammering me. Nope, it's not good enough. Dude, you can do it better. <laughs> so now when you're in the studio, is there a particular approach that you take with a song? Like how, what's, what's the writing process like for no effects in, in relation to you and your, and your layering guitar parts? The writing process? Yeah. Mike writes the songs, and then we sit down together and we write, uh, work out all the parts, work through what works and what doesn't work and make changes. And then um, we go in the studio and start tracking, and we still make a lot of changes in the studio. Yeah. We'll track, and we're like, you know what? I think it would sound better if we did it this way, and then we'll try something different. Let's try this. Let's try that. You know, and Mike's right there. You know, hey, little, hey that, try that guitar part down here instead. And, you know, I'm laying solos, and Mike goes, I like the beginning of that solo, and I like the ending with the middle 
try to come up with something different. And then I'm on the spot. We're changing things constantly. Yeah. You know, that's awesome. So now, are there plans for a new record? I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but we are working on new songs. <laughs> that's okay. I won't tell anyone. I promise. <laughs> 